Good evening, everybody. It's March the 16th, 2020, and I bring this regular meeting of council to order. Result of the amended, amended agenda for March 16th, 2021, regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, all in favor, opposed, it's carried. Result of the, the result of the minutes of the March, March 2nd, 2021 regular council meeting being approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Delegations, we don't have Miss uh, Gray here with us, I don't believe. So we'll, maybe we'll just move on and, and uh, when she comes in, then we'll go right back to uh, 4.1. 6.1, result of building permits 621 through 921 with a total estimated value of $104,320 be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor White. Seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So that was 6.1. Um, Ms. Gray is in the room. Are you, I'll give you a couple, a couple minutes to get ready and then we'll Sorry. go back to you, okay? No, that's okay. It's been one of those nights. <laughs> it happens, it's okay. I'm actually good to go. So you're ready? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, Ms. Gray, welcome to uh, Swan River Council and, uh, and uh, we're ready to hear your report. Hello, everybody. Um, those, can I continue? Yes, you can. Um, for anybody that I haven't met in person yet, I am Lauren Gray. I'm your Economic Development Officer, and this is a long overdue visit. Um, this was planned a few times around, um, and then COVID kind of put a wrench in that. So nice to finally meet everybody face to face. Um, I understand you've been receiving updates from uh, Councillor Gray, Councillor Tony, periodically on what we have been up to. Um, so. I will give you kind of a rundown um, from what I've been doing the last couple of months. So the biggest focus, um, which everybody's probably aware of, is the Universal Broadband Fund that we've been working on um, in conjunction with Community Futures Parkland and RioNet. Uh, they're the internet service provider involved in that. Um, that's been several months uh, in the works. Um, the latest development with that, however, is after lots of feedback from some of the local municipalities about what their expected contribution to that was. Not so positive feedback from some. Um, we revisited that plan and actually came up with an alternate partnership. So um, late February, uh, the Indigenous and Northern Infrastructure Branch of the Canadian Infrastructure Bank came on board with the project. And as long as none of the local Indigenous communities are left out of this project and the intended route, then they agreed to participate in the funding on that. So there is no longer any expected municipal contributions to this, provided that the Ultimate Broadband Fund application for our project is approved. Um, that would mean that 75% of the funding is provided federally and then they would step up and cover the remainder of it. So um, I know there's been lots of discussion about the alternatives that are available right now, Starlink being a main one, um, and as fantastic as that opportunity is, that's also not at a price point that is available to all people. So the extension of our local broadband would offer people another alternative. It's comparable to the current export net pricing um, on a monthly basis. 
So, I mean, no internet is cheap these days, but it does offer people a little bit more affordable alternative. Um, if the R project specifically is approved, it also will provide a good number of jobs across the parkland. Our, um, our application is a regional approach. Um, it's parkland wide. So they're expected it would provide about an additional 40 jobs across the parkland. So not all necessarily in the valley, but a portion of that would be here, which any additional jobs are a good opportunity. Um, so that went in yesterday. That was the official application, um, and now we wait for the government to provide approvals that they haven't assigned a timeline to that. So it's going to be a lot of hurry up and wait for some sort of word. Um, I've also been um, looking a little bit locally for potential options for an entrepreneurial hub. Um, I know there have been some discussions about a large version of that in Minnetonis. Um, now that there's a pretty significant one available in Dauphin, um, I've been looking at sort of a scaled back version of that, something that would provide the same services to the local community, but um, there isn't the draw that there once was to doing it on a large scale here when there was nothing else available within you know several hours distance. Now the PAW has one, Dauphin has one, so it would really be looking at one of the services more just the local communities. Um, a potential opportunity for that is um, to maybe combine the RISE offices with something like that. I know that isn't necessarily something I've spoken to the board about yet, <laughs> but that's one thing that we are discussing at tomorrow's meeting is um, our rent and our current office space, what you know that looks like going forward. So just a potential there to combine a few services in one. Um, there's been extensive research into incinerator versus landfill options versus larger scale renewable energy from waste options. Um, the long and the short of that in-depth conversation is that uh, locally we don't produce a large enough volume of waste for any of the large scale um, energy conversion options or really most of the incineration options. Because of the land availability in Canada and the fact that that isn't an extreme shortage yet, like some other countries, the landfill option is by far still the most economical option. So until some sort of regulations change that start prohibiting that or land does become um, in short supply, I think that's going to continue to be the most economical option. Um, Still trying to connect with the mayor of Morden. I know that it is a conversation that you guys have started here. Um, we have had great email correspondence back and forth about having an in-depth conversation about it, and we don't seem to be able to connect. Um, he's a very busy guy, and trying to nail him down has been quite difficult. So I've uh, asked if there's anybody else in his council that I could talk to, and he really prefers to handle the conversations himself, being that he's been the most involved. Um, so. Just waiting for him to reach out. I've also left him a couple messages with his office, you know, just asking if in the meantime, uh, his executive assistant could maybe provide some info or, you know, give me some place to start really looking into what we would need to do with this on our end prior to being able to nail him down for a conversation. But um, I keep trying every week. We have another email about trying to have a conversation. So hopefully one day he makes a phone call. Um, working with local businesses to determine potential pivots, uh, helping a few no or new local entrepreneurs explore potential grant availability, uh, navigate the confusion of business startup, and uh, Community Futures Parkland has been a really great resource for that. Um, we tend to sort of shuffle the recommendations back and forth um, depending on the respective area strengths and that sort of thing, so uh, they've definitely been a really strong partnership. Uh, in January, I created an EDO networking group. Um, because of COVID, there's been essentially no networking, um, not just for our profession, but for most. So um, being a strong believer in networking and uh, bouncing ideas off of others, I created a small networking group 
with EDOs from Portage La Prairie all the way up to the Paw. Um, a bit of intention behind sort of that logistical route and uh, it's been fantastic so far. We've only had a couple meetings and it's been really, really good. If for nothing else, it reinforces that we're on the right track with the things that we're looking at because there is a lot of commonality between all the respective regions. Everybody uh, seems to have very similar priorities, uh, very similar focuses, but it's been great as far as, you know, have you tried looking into these grant opportunities or you know, reach out to this guy here, he's a huge asset for this. Um, just really great networking with that group. Um, and we've discussed some ways in which we can, both from a tourism and from a potential investment standpoint, make recommendations based on the strengths of our specific regions. So the PAW can't necessarily offer the same things that Portage Prairie can, and vice versa. So we've discussed that, you know, if we get potential investors or tourists looking at our regions, tourism is a really easy one, um, especially because of that linear sort of focus. If we get tourists visiting one of these areas, it's easy to attempt to persuade them to continue on that path. And you know, have you checked out what Dauphin has to offer, or what Roblin or the Paw, or, um, and same thing from an investment perspective. If uh, we have potential investors that you're looking into one of our communities and it doesn't quite pan out, maybe it can for another region. So uh, some strength among numbers there. Um, I've been working with Second Chance Employment, uh, a newly founded uh, group here in the Valley, uh, developed by the Business Consortium based on some specific needs they were seeing here. Uh, and essentially I've been trying to evaluate potential job opportunities available in the Valley for specifically high-risk individuals. And that is most of the exciting stuff. Um, much of March has been spent on the not-so-glamorous things, catching up on accounting, year-end financials, audits, bills, that sort of thing. Um, trying to develop some budget evaluations for our board to help uh, solidify our 2021 budget. And then April, um, with the restrictions having eased and getting some of that year-end financial stuff out of the way, is really going to be me hitting business as hard again. Um, with all the restrictions, COVID kind of halted my uh, introductions to local businesses and business players, and so uh, that was put on much more of a pause than I would have liked over the winter and April, my or the rest of March and April, um, my focus is really going to be uh, getting back around, banging on doors, speaking to the business people of the valley and uh, some of the key players about what their next steps are, where their expansions and developments look like they're going for the next year or two, or what needs they see. So. That's my quick rundown, and I know there's going to be questions, so I tried to make it as quick as possible. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So, who wants to go first? <laughs> Councillor Delorier. Um, you know, I've heard from other EDOs or other, uh, uh, you know, reading about economic development that smokestack chasing, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's the big headlines that get made, but it isn't always the most fruitful. And, and, I, and I get that, but part of me also uh, thinks that if you don't at least try to chase a few smokestacks, you'll never get one. So I just wonder how, how does that fit into your role? And you know, I, I think back to Portage with their big potato factory expansion. How, did, did their, and you, you mentioned that you have a, a networking group. Did their EO play a role in, in chasing that smokestack, so, so to speak? Or is, the, is, the, is that something that is not in your purview? Or I, I guess I'm just wondering how do we still focus on the important work that you're doing but still keep in the back of mind chasing those smokestacks that you know in one fell swoop can bring in 50 or 80 jobs that, that would you know be really really helpful so sure yeah, yeah really great question um definitely uh there is a divide among where people feel economic development focus should be and that's exactly it you get half of the room thinking it's all about the smokestacks, that's the only area you should be focusing because that's the most um, substantial return. 
and the other half says, you know, that's a waste of time chasing smokestacks, focus on the existing businesses and expanding those little by little. And I think the, my thoughts on it at least are that it's best to try to have a balance. There, you absolutely have to focus on all your existing businesses, try and help them grow and profit best you can, while still always kind of having an eye on what could be out there. Um, actually, the EDO and Portage was not involved in uh, securing the Sun Plot expansion or the Roquette Pea Plant or a lot of the existing or current developments there. Um, they've had huge things exploding there over the last few years. And she was actually just brought on um, a year ago into that position. Um, that was more based on investors knowing that Portage is the potato area. So, you know, looking at uh, additional expansion that probably made the most sense. And then because of the some of the existing industry there, a spin-off of that became the Rokepi plant and using the byproducts of some of the existing industry. Um, I absolutely love the idea of getting some big industry in here, that big smokestack idea. I would like to be focusing a little bit more on that than I have been lately, but there's been a lot of catch up this year and figuring out where I want to go with things and trying to evaluate existing programs and um, that's taken a bit of a backseat, but that's where with the upcoming several weeks, I want us to talk to some of the key players in town here and do you see expansion being part of your company's focus for the Valley of the next couple years? Um, with what you're producing, are there any potential spin-offs like the Marquette Pea Plant? Is there something like that that we can bring in because of what is already here? So I think in a perfect world, there is a happy medium where you can help promote your existing businesses, bring in new business, because there's always going to be that turnover. There's going to be some businesses who are closing their doors and you want to make sure that there's something to replace them regardless of the size, right? Um, but I think that you do always kind of need to keep an eye on the bigger prize too and do what you can to try and promote the area, try and make as appealing as you can for investment in the hopes that you can nail down one of the biggest or bigger industry players at some point. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Actually, I got a, a second question that was triggered by your comments there. Um, you know, you talk about uh, businesses closing, you hope there's somebody to replace them. And I think that that might possibly be a problem with some of our older business owners that are looking to retire. Is there a role for, for Rise to play in lining up, uh, you know, people that want to retire with people that want to purchase their business or, you know, identifying, you know, okay, the tire shop's going to be closing and they're wanting to retire in a few years. We don't want to lose that business to our community. Is, is there some way that we can match people up that are looking to, uh, to you know, either take on a new business or, you know, start a business when one closes? Is, is, that, is that a role that Rise play, can yeah, play? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Um, yeah. That's There's been several discussions and there's been a few from within uh, Swan River here, but it's been more of a problem for the outlying rural communities, the smaller towns where um, people were on the fence about retirement pre-COVID and that really gave them the big push that the financial hardships of that kind of had them saying, hey, that's enough. You know, that was the push into retirement. I just want to sell. Um, <coughs> and you hate to see any business just close their doors and we have another vacant building um, and potentially losing services in these communities. So, what I've been trying to do is um, I've been encouraging when I do the door to door, especially luckily I got a lot of that in in the summer and fall last year, going door to door in the small towns and really encouraging anybody that if they are looking to sell, reach out to me. In addition to the realtors you're working with, um, reach out to me and let's talk about the specifics of your business and your facility. And we recently got our website up and running, and that's part of what I want to feature on that, is potential investment opportunities. So whether it's trying to recruit an investor to come in and take over the building, and maybe they have a great new business idea, and it's uh, it, you know it's a transformation of an existing business. Everybody still wins that way. Um, or whether it's an entrepreneur wanting to work for themselves, but they don't really know what, they just want to step into an existing business, marketing it that way too. Um, there's a couple small um, grocery stores, for example, that 
are um, a very easy walk into business if somebody wants to just take over what's there, or there's plenty of opportunity to wipe the slate clean and start fresh there. So, um, yeah, really trying to work with owners to say, okay, what is your plan? Are you wanting just out entirely? Are you willing to transition new owners into your business model and help walk them through? And a lot of them have really been receptive to that, that they care about the community too, and uh, they've invested all the time and money into the business that they've developed. So a lot are very willing to say, yeah, if somebody wants to walk in and take over the business, we'll totally help them out. We'll give them six months, a year to learn the ropes and you know help them transition. So in the hopes that we aren't just having more businesses close their doors. Council right? Or I'm sorry, Council White. Two points, I guess. Uh, are there, uh, relative to the incinerator, mm -hmm. are there specific volumes that are required because, before incinerators become financially feasible? There were some, I don't have them in front of me right now. We did discuss them at one of our board meetings, but it was pretty substantial. It was something like, and I don't, these are larger scale incinerators. This wasn't, this is the larger end of the incinerator model or looking at converting um, the waste into some sort of renewable energy. And it was something like a million tons in place with X number of tons, you know, annually going forward. So hypothetically, if I did that, that end line was if we increased those people asking for the use of our dump, whatever the proper term is, site. If potentially if we took in more, hypothetically we could perhaps look at an incinerator in the future. If I knew those numbers, Derek would know what kind of volume we put through there now, Derek. Um, Mr. Harvey? Just from the brief uh, investigation that I did, uh, it's orders of magnitude to get into where it's economically feasible. Mm -hmm. So accepting waste from a few additional communities when put us into that range where it starts to flatten out. Okay. The numbers that were presented at Rise were something in the range of 20 times what we currently have. That, that kind of answers it. I, I, yeah, I don't I, remember the exact and I had discussed this yeah. briefly. And Okay. The information out there isn't necessarily super reliable or readily available, but both of us having done our respective research into it, we're finding the same thing. I see that one set is 20 times what we have. <laughs> Other side stuff. So the other question I have relative to tourism, because I, I just keep thinking uh, that our, our community, our valley community could do a better job. And if there were a carrot that would bring the tourists, and a bit that I read that suggests that old farts my age, for example, I become a little more sedentary, they're buying a good set of binoculars, a good camera, and the bird watchers, and bird watching is an extremely fast fast growing activity in North America. We have bird species up there that aren't in a lot of places. So I'm, I'm sure, if, I'm, I'm thinking if we ever tried to market our birds. Honestly, I don't believe we have. I haven't That's seen right. anything um, in all of the previous project initiatives that yeah. I was sorting through. Um, and I can't say that I am overly familiar with bird watching myself, but that is a valid point. Uh, well, you, you probably don't have any spare time, but I would, I'm going to make a point like a bird watching relative to uh, money. I'll, I'll, and I will get back to uh, Councilor Gray with that. Thank you. Okay. That's a good one. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray? Oh, I was going to answer. Oh, okay. Councilor Um I know a few months back we had, Tom had asked you to do a, a study into our um, incentive program, and I know you provided in a report um, regarding the uh, commercial aspect of it. Um, are you continuing on or in the process of doing the residential aspects of study to see if that incentive plan actually? Uh, it um, pushes people into building new homes and buy, like buying lots and building new homes or buying existing homes, things like that. No, I wasn't currently expanding on that anymore. I can, if that's something that council would like. And yeah, I know that 
there was mention of delving into this a little bit deeper and potentially a letter coming from council requesting, but I don't think it was in regards to the uh, residential side of it. I think it was looking back a certain number of applicants to see if that had weighed in on their decision or not. That's the residential. Okay, but specific to residential was what? That's was. Okay. my thought was it was on that. I know that they, they were working in on the business side was very thorough and provided some um, cheery thoughts and opportunities there. Um, but some of the questions were individuals knowing that if they had sent it to plan that we have it's currently swayed them into just buying an existing home that's for sale or buying a vacant lot and building a brand new home um, play a part in their um, decision to go either or not Okay, that's definitely something I can look into. I know that um, Ms. Hankelman and I have discussed that right prior to her transition um, and she was going to speak to council and see if that was something that was wanted that she would then send a letter to rise asking for another evaluation of that she was a little uncertain too as to where um, where or how i guess you guys would provide the information for me to be able to specifically poll a representative group so <laughs> that might be a really fun task for you to hear. <laughs> but yeah i'm happy to look into that as long as we can figure out how to sort of narrow down the field of candidates and get those phone calls and ask for their feedback on the program for sure. Because yeah, we definitely have the list of exactly who applied for the Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. Councillor Gray. No, I was answering again. Oh, okay. All right, so we got that then? Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Councillor White? Fortunately, the computer is a, uh, this is a one hour call, and I don't believe any single hour. So bird watching is reported as being the fastest growing outdoor activity in North America. Really? $18.7 billion. <laughs> so if, you, like, if you're not a birder, why would you care? But this one article is saying that. Wow. Okay, so we, we learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Any further discussion? All right, being that there is none, thank you. Uh, you have any closing remarks or anything? I don't think so. Uh, thank you for having me, and it's nice to meet everybody face to face. And, um, if anybody has any thoughts or feedback going forward, don't hesitate to reach out anytime. And hopefully, if COVID cooperates, I will be back here again uh, periodically. I'd like to make my rounds every couple months. To the respective councils, if we can, and pop in, have a face to face, and touch base. Councilor White, raise uh, I'm sure the worship will be saying the same thing, but I appreciate enthusiasm, I appreciate smiles and uh, brightness, and, and you certainly portray all of the above. Thank you. And uh, that makes me feel really the first time I've met you. You're candid, you're frank, I don't know. I'd like that answer. Why not? So I uh, appreciate that what you do, and I'm sure council, if we can help you, feel free to all. Works both ways. But if I know about birds, I have friends who know lots of about birds. <laughs> I, know, I know a bit. <clears throat> Thank you. I am going to go home and Google this now, because I feel like there's a whole potentially untapped industry there that I'm missing out on the bird watching. Very good. And then when you have a committee or a group that's going to be heading up all that, Councilor White would be more than happy to have that. <laughs> Perfect. Voluntold. There you go. <laughs> Everything that Councillor White says, yeah, goes. And thank you very much. And we appreciate your time that you've well, taken you. and what your, your your work that you're doing in our communities as well. well thank you. I appreciate it. It's uh, a bit of a, a learning curve for sure, especially navigating it during COVID. Oh, absolutely. Don't make it easy, but hopefully we're back on track now. Yeah, keep what? moving straight ahead. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Yeah, have a good evening. You too. Yes, absolutely. Okay, straight back to 7.2, 721. Are you coming here? Yeah. Result the uh, February Protective Services Report be received, moved by 
use public works. Seven one you missed. Maybe I did miss that. Maybe I remember, but resolve that the director of public works report be received, moved by Council Mario, seconded by So that was good then. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. It was yeah, White and Morio. I didn't know if we you know, I just Okay. No worries. That's all good. 721. Result of the uh, February Protected Services Report be received. Moved by Councilor Gray. Seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Council reports. I will start tonight with Councilor Gray. Here's the tons of report. There's some um, stuff that we would like to zoom talk about in camera with respect to shared services. The chair is here and, and he can report on it more particularly. The community as a whole, and again, I'm not going to report to my colleagues and something they attended. Um, we, uh, recreation continues to move along. Nothing much new. Um, all the things I reported as the committee as a whole. With respect to uh, settlement services, uh, we continue to meet essentially by email. So I'm not sure why we're doing that, but that's the process I've been chosen. So we approve reports and finances, so they just it's just on its own. And uh, RISE meets tomorrow night. I'm not sure if I'll get into the time, so somebody may have to attend on that. Let me know. I will. Is that everything? That's all right. Okay, Councilor White. Uh, with this tremendous help of uh, Mr. Poole, uh, most of his uh, thought procedures, but we've agreed on it. We've sent a letter at the request of Council to the RCMP, uh, appreciating uh, the difficulties of the past and some of the things aren't easy to solve relative to uh, concerns rel relative to crime. And uh, we've asked them, uh, how can we help? What are their options? Uh, what are their plans in the future, and we hopefully will get together with them in the not too distant future, and I've asked for that meeting with them. And I put a copy of that letter in all of your mailboxes if you haven't seen it, so that's uh, that's hopefully how to deter crime in the short term. Uh, I can find again, uh, May the 1st is going to be the uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish Dinner. There's only having 300 tickets, and uh, that's a drive through uh, PMH, uh, I'm reading some literature that they're going to 24th and 25th of this month, We'll have pop-up clinics in Swan River, and right now, uh, today, I read that 70, they're down to 75 years of age. I tried to get registered, but I couldn't do it for whatever reason, but uh, perhaps they're full already. So, mass, this is wash your hands. This thing isn't, isn't going away for a while. We have to be prudent. Uh, we had our cow meeting, and uh, tomorrow's a special day for those of us of Irish ancestry. And I read this little toast my wife gave to me. It says, there are good ships, and wood chips, ships that sail the sea, but the best ships of all are friendships, and may they always be. So for those of you who have Irish background, uh, happy St. Patty's Day a little early. It starts tomorrow, March 17th, you know So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, uh, happy St. Patty's Day to everybody. Also enjoy the day. So, uh, um, I uh, I like how you ended off there, Councillor White, with a little bit of an Irish accent. <laughs> <to be in laughs> um, only meeting I had uh, other than the town meeting that I attended was the shared search meeting with Swan Valley West that I'll report on in camera, um, as it's an ongoing negotiation. Other than that, nothing for me. Okay. Councillor Morial. Uh, nothing additional to, for me besides the community of the whole and just services agreement that uh, has been already mentioned. And uh, Councillor Friesen. I also attended the meeting. Uh, also, a uh, community sick care. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read this. Making Swan Valley a healthy community for our children and youth. Our mission at Swan Valley Community Sick Care is to engage the community in promoting positive development and 
to increase healthy behaviors of children and youth. They offer free programming. They offer community events such as Oktoberfest and Toys for the Drive. So right now they're looking for new board members or volunteers. So if anybody is interested, please contact Don and Jean Scott or Michelle Mish. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further really to add. You, you all kind of covered it all off. Um, Mr. Poole, do you have anything to add there? I know you will get a report uh, later, but uh, is there anything that you wanted to add there at all? Just a reminder to council to do the homework for the April 13th resource uh, strategic plan. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray. Order of business that we haven't covered. Um, there was going to be on this um, week ago yesterday a meeting with the three municipalities on RISE and, and the process for that. Um, there are two things that arise out of that. Um, and I just want to know whether or not we've scheduled something because we, our position was at the last council meeting that if we couldn't arrange something, if nothing was coming from Mountain for the next time, that we were simply going to take the whole by the corners and, and set a date. So I don't know if we've done that. The second um, is something that arose out of Ms. Brady's presentation that I think we glaze over again. Um, two years ago, Verizon had an opportunity to start. Um, uh, there were none around anywhere. It was a novel idea. And um, I won't go into the history, we all know it. But the result was that we squandered an opportunity um, that particularly our partners in RISE uh, were challenging in the way they addressed that. And there's no problem in particular. I, I, I just bring that to everyone's attention because um, that opportunity is entirely lost, I think, for all intents and purposes. Two years ago, or even one two years ago, that Rose, um, the nearest one was Winnipeg. I think it was someplace in Saskatchewan, or Saskatchewan. Um, as she now mentions, there is one in Dauphin who perpetuates this process and one in the wall. The idea that we would be able to create a, a uh, entrepreneurial hub, a, a uh, room for like a black whatever, seems unlikely given that. Government resources are not coming here, and we've had a number of unfortunate decisions recently that are going to make that even more challenging. So I, I draw that to everyone's attention because it's going to make economic development more challenging than it would otherwise have been. It was a lost opportunity. And so I, I, I do want, when we get to that meeting, this council to recognize that we need that organization to be much more nimble and we need municipalities to either get on board or get on the road. And if they don't, then um, I candidly, um, we can all sit around and debate the chairs on the hand. Uh, really, that's not particularly helpful. In any event, that, that those were the two comments I had. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, on the uh, amount, I will uh, con I'll get a hold of the read tomorrow. Um, actually, I had contact him uh, a couple weeks ago when we had that discussion, and he said that he was going to get back to me because he was going to speak with his CAO about it, and they did not get back to me. So I will get back. Uh, I will book him again, and if not, if they don't want to, then we'll do what we would. Uh, the second option was, and we will contact our partners and uh, get a meeting uh, set up because it is important. And there's a, there's other things in that meeting that we need to discuss about besides that. So thank you for raising that. So being that uh, cover that off, then uh, Mr. Poole, there was nothing else, right? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Um, the uh, the homework you mentioned about the or the uh, strategic planning to be ready for that, but also the course everybody has taken there, um, the course on um, code of conduct. Code of conduct. The date for that is is coming up for. Uh, the deadline is. Do it in October when they first brought it up. 
That's right. And, and just a reminder, it does have to be done for at the end of this month. Yes. You have to have it done. There's a way of confirming it, isn't there? Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's really easy to do, and it's, it'll take you about maybe, at most, maybe two hours to get it done. But you have to complete it to be on council. I can send out the information, so resend the information. So yeah, so you have to set up an account and then log in and switch the person. Okay. 8.1. Whereas the town of Swan River and Swan River Municipal Developers Limited have numerous vacant lots for sale within the town, and whereas the town of Swan River is committed to encouraging new development, and whereas the town has received interest from private local companies to provide a marketing strategy that will promote the sale of vacant lot at town owned lots. Therefore, be it resolved, the town of Swan River issue a request for proposal to local interested parties to prepare marketing strategies to promote the sale of vacant lots owned by the town of Swan River and Swan River municipal developers. Moved by. Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio? Um, I had brought that forward and Councillor Gray has graciously moved it for us. Um, but uh, I've been approached by a, a number of individuals that are interested in providing uh, the town with some marketing strategies on how to promote uh, the sale of uh, some of the vacant lots that the town and the municipal developers own. Um, since this year is uh, market where there's record low mortgage rates that uh, are prompting people to look at newer, more expensive homes than uh, what they would normally would be. So here's an opportunity for us to uh, offload or sell some of these properties that we have in inventory. Um, as I know from conversations with uh, some other individuals, uh, hopefully um, that there are families out there that are looking for um, a sector of housing that is not available in Swan River. Um, there's like a lot of first time home buyers and retirement homes, but the middle age group, the family home that has three to four bedrooms, 1500 square feet, um, that's fairly modern, is in short supply. So some of them are not quite aware of what we have. Um, so there's that thing. And lastly, um, I don't believe the town should be in uh, real estate business. I think that we need to. Uh, um, well, it's created us some great discussion. It's going to create great discussion later on tonight on some of our agenda items. So um, sooner or later that, um, we don't have to be worried. Let, let the real estate be with the real estate people and, uh, and go from there. So. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.2. Resolved that Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020, be received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor White, you're on the commission. Is there anything that you want to comment on at all? No, I'm, I'm, we're still in, the, in a state of flux relative to how it's going to be. Uh, in the future, it would be on taxation per capita or it would be on uh, assessment of land. So, but that's a, that's a decision we don't have to make today. Right. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3. Result of four set of firefighter turnout gear be purchased from Rocky Mountain Phoenix at a cost of $13,758.08 and that the amount of $13,085.67 from fire protection grant be applied to that purchase, leaving a balance of $672.41 to be paid from the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor uh, Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. That was good news for us. Okay, 8.4, this is Councillor Gray, uh, requested at our last meeting to uh, you want to bring an item up for discussion. Thank so. you. And I, I, I thought through how I want to 
to present this. Because the example I used, or the impetus for my discussion, was one particular person. But as I reflected on it, I think the problem isn't, and as I described it at the committee of the whole meeting, isn't that one statement. There has been a growing or increasing level of incivility in public life. This council doesn't represent that, I have to say that at the outset. But other councils perhaps, but certainly in terms of legislative bodies around the world. I mean, we look at the phenomena in the United States where the demonization of opponents on, to some extent on both sides, certainly more pronounced on one side than the other, and the use of untruths has been pronounced. And I see an increasing level of that. And it offends me to my core. And I think this council ought to say, and I move that we say, that we reject any statement by a political person that demonizes other politicians or that untruthfully sets out factual evidence. In that particular case, they suggested that every person in, in all but a few people in one political party believed in open sex with children and with, um, as you express it, with um, unlimited use of all of the words. I think it was what you actually said. That could not be further from the truth for anybody in Canada. And I, you know, we have vigorous debates and, and um, have, you know, and have even taken shots at each other from time to time, you know, in at least a somewhat humorous way. But I, I can't imagine why anyone would think it was appropriate. And I, I for one, condemn, and I, I leave it to each of you to express your opinion that any politician would say anything that was, as I said, that demonized some other politician or that said something that was untruthful. And, and everybody has to make up their own minds. That's true. And I normally would raise in this form that issue. If you'll recall, I raised previously the discussion of things outside of the scope of our area of responsibility was appropriate and that our council was decided as a policy that's not the case. And that being the case, I therefore raise this issue and think that you should each express your view. Now you're entitled to say no great or wrong. That's your choice. But that's my view. And so um, if you uh, choose not to I'll raise a motion, we can not have a second or have a second we never will. We'll see how it goes. But I, I invite each of my colleagues to express their views on that. To get into a debate about it, I think it's, it would be, it would have to be through a resolution, because usually council does debate through a resolution. But at the same time, I understand what you're saying, and I, and I, and I you know, agree that, you know, people shouldn't do some of the things that, you know, you hear individuals say, and what you say, demonize. But I don't know if it's council's responsibility or position in an open discussion or, or forum here uh, to, to do that. I don't know. And to get into politics, you know, especially if we're talking about backbenchers and making you know, reference, a lot of times when we had some discussion in the past, it had to do with uh, supporting legislation or, 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 or something that, to that nature. I don't know about this, but, you know, I'm not I'm the only person that's sitting here so if council wants to uh, respond to that, uh, you know, you have the right to, to, to do so. Councilor Morio. Um, 
I don't disagree with you, uh, Councillor Gray, and um, I like I don't believe like uh, if a politician um, is going to make statements and that that they should give one hundred percent truth, not the half, half truth, quarter truth, or whatever. How to spin it for the message of the day? Um, but um, I would be uh, supportive of this council taking a stance as part of our mission and values, especially with our, uh, the values statement that. Uh, that's not an activity that this council uh, get into as, as whole as one of our written values. If there's a, a resolution that you're motioning, I'll second it to get it on the floor. Um, but I guess as far as commenting on it, I think you, you commented on, uh, you know, there's a news headline a couple weeks ago, and I think it was one backbench MP making outlandish remarks in response to a, to a backbench M, uh, private members bill put forward by another backbench MP. So, yeah, that, that was in context, but um, uh, it, it was. I apologize. I interrupted. I apologize. Well, I, I think it was the context. It's just that week there was a, a backbench MP from that party that put forward a private members bill legalizing all drugs. So that's what it was in response to. Um, but I, 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 I agree that there's no place. things would go so much smoother. And if we could have civil discussions, like, you know, I don't want to hold up, that's up like we're the standard of, of civil discussions, but I mean, like we often do. I, I, th I think you're right on that regard. Um, but as far as commenting on, on whatever other levels of government you're doing or what's going on in, in the world at large, um, I guess we have every right to, to make a comment if we want to, but I don't think it was the same as the, uh, you also referenced previously that we had uh, vo voted on something that was outside our jurisdiction, but I think it was in reference to pending legislation by the actual government, not uh, comments made by a backbench MP, if, I, if I'm remembering, I think it was the firearms legislation or something like that that you're referring to. Or night lighting, one of those two, but I mean that was in response to to actual legislation from a, from a sitting government that was you know being enacted on. So in my mind, making comment on that has more uh, we, we have more purpose in doing that. I mean, it, it affects our citizens. It, it, it's legislation that will be coming through, not you know backbench banter, which who, who knows what kind of crazy people get elected from. All parts that, but I think you're right. The level of discourse needs to be, the volume needs to be turned down, and true discussion needs to happen without worrying about whether people are getting elected and playing to, playing to the lowest common denominator of your base that that is going to elect you because I think that that gets you nowhere. So I, I think you're right on a couple points, but I but I just want to, I think there is a difference in talking about, you know. Because I mean, we can we can dig up all sorts of crazy comments that come from every political stripe, um, and I'm not defending the comments that were made at all. But I think that's different than making comment on legislation that's being passed by by a government. Is that just my thoughts? Anything further? I'll well, second the motion. Okay, so you you want to bring a uh, motion forward then? Uh, I, I, I heard two other people speak. And okay. Uh, Councillor Friesen, do you want to speak on that? Councillor Friesen? Okay. Councillor White? No governmental entity should support comments that are taking that up. Absolutely. And I'm not sure where we go after that statement. I think uh, Council Moore had a comment that wherever it sits in one of our code of conduct that we, we cannot support, uh, I guess, a thing to deal with ourselves using comments that are inappropriate. But I'm not sure she should go any further than that. And, and there was one member who suggested the bill, that's true. But that's not the context that I was having. Context was that nobody in that party, nobody usually condemned that or said that was wrong or did anything to set that record straight. That was what was offensive. People have, there are all kinds of crazy people in the world, and, and we can't control who's 
where. What we can control is whether or not we associate with them. That was always offensive. And, and it seems, and, and, and council is fully within its right. Everybody essentially is saying, you're right. I'm not speaking for it, but opposing it in a certain way. But they don't think it's this council of constitutions. I, I disagree vehemently that I, I spoke at some length last time because I do think that this, and so I, to some extent, it's not being consistent. I'm, I'm doing it, I think, as much to show the inconsistency of those previous actions. Our council has no business talking about other levels of government. It is inappropriate. Having said that, to talk about civil discourse and the fact that we oppose and consider it morally bankrupt for people to dehumanize, to denigrate, and make, say, untruthful statements about it. other people and other political parties. It shouldn't be that hard. Candidly, that should be the easiest thing in the world for us to say. Apparently not. It is what it is. Okay. So, uh, I, have, I have a very general resolution typed up if council would like to hear it. It's not specific to any bipartisan, but. Okay. It goes resolving council and the town swanger dejected demonizing comments and level of uh, discourse made between elected officials in all levels of government. Made it for the result the town swanger make it a priority to ensure our mission and vision include the obligation of elected officials to be truthful and morally respectful to operate in a dignified capacity. General. It is what it is. Only that. Okay, can you put it then on there so I can read it then? I'll second it. You're going to have an 841. Or, or do we bring it up in. Um, I guess it could be there. It's there if you refresh it. Resolve Council of the Town of Swan River deject the demonizing comments and level of discourse made between elected officials in all levels of government. Be it further resolved that the Town of Swan River make it a priority to ensure our mission and vision include the obligation of elected officials to be truthful and more morally respectful to operate in a dignified capacity. That was moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point one. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number twenty seven three one six to number twenty seven three sixty five as listed on schedule A, totaling one hundred and forty three thousand four hundred and thirty one and 71 cents. Payroll counts checks number 4823 to 4829 as listed on Schedule B, totaling $76,127.56. Direct deposits as listed on Schedule C, totaling $11,972.09. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Council Friesen. Discussion? Council Morio. Um, check number 27361 to the rule dietitian. Would that encompass? I would have to get back to you on that one. Yes, I don't know if Mr. Benita can answer it. Can you? That's uh, part of the uh, safe at home programming being done with uh, monies, granted monies at the Veterans Hall. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Uh, 
resulting financial statements for the 12 months ending uh, December 31st, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the financial statements for the two months ended February 28, 2021, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Whereas subsections 306 and 306.1 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon assessment alterations for mental assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by mental assessment services on February 26, 2021 to be made uh, sorry, be made to the 2021 property and business tax rolls with the resulting with the resulting reductions totaling six hundred ninety eight dollars and ninety eight cents. Moved by Council Morio, seconded by Council Delorier. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved the bylaw 3, 2021, being the bylaw of the town of Swanover to amend the zoning bylaw, be ready first time. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? We've gone through this with the town meeting. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thirteen, resolved that, resolved that pursuant to sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act, Council will go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items will be discussed, lot sales, purchase services, salary management bylaw, and union negotiation uh, updates. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're in camera. Result of the Chief Administrator Officer be authorized to sign the land sale agreement for lots 17, 18, and 19, Plan 2554. Moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councilor Morial. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15 2. Result of the offer for lots number 1 to 5, 15, 16, 21 to 25, 36 and 37 in block 3, plan 2554, be accepted, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio, discussion, uh, Councillor Morio. Um, as our previous discussions and stuff like that, I don't think this is a sufficient offer based on the information that we got right now. So um, I recommend, or it's up to you as the board, how you want, but I would be voting against this resolution as uh, the offer is presented. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gray? Sorry? Stole my thunder. Okay. That's exactly it. It's not that our offer should not be accepted. Councilor Delorier? Um, I, 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 I won't be voting in favor of this, but I think, uh, uh, you know, we should uh, reach out to them and ask, you know, it, let them know where we, why we couldn't accept it, you know. Yeah. There needs to be some sort of representation of, of, the, of the value that, that, that the community would be receiving for that much of a discount. I mean, it's a 90% discount off assessment, so if you can let them know that we would entertain I guess we would entertain other offers if they can if they can illustrate to us why it would be uh, in, in the town's best interest and, and okay and also on that you know if they if they go outside the town of Swan River to buy land they would not be able to buy that many acres for that kind of money uh, Councillor Morio um, I just want to also mention that 
this company um, has came to the town already and has purchased land at a discounted price that has sat vacant for the last two, three years since they have purchased it with no improvements besides taking the, the grass off of it. So um, they've already had their fight at the candy apple. So. Okay, go ahead. I guess just in response to that, there because that was discussed, this is an extension of those multiple lots they, they purchased. And council should know that I am the, the owners of this company, I'm related to both of them. So I want to step away from the negotiations of this deal. Uh, I know Darren is extremely busy right now with, uh, with other things, but I, if I set up meetings and, and debrief him right before, whether I go in with him so there's a a witness, uh, just to let you know that I'll be separate on the cell phone. I think you not be part of the community at all. I think you need to, as it comes to the deter that conflict and stay away from the other. Nothing good can happen for the community. No, I agree. I will agree myself. And that's good that you brought that up. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. We want to sell this stuff. I don't get it. You guys want businesses? This around. Sorry. Fifteen three one. Result that the director of public works be authorized to begin the hiring process for an engineering clerk. Moved by. Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Morio. This is the discussion. Councilor Morio and Councilor Um Since this is a new job that, um, that's being uh, created, would this need to be also added into your grid? Um, this is a union, union position. So the engineering clerk is in our current CBA. So as opposed to hiring an assistant director of public works with the, with the status of our agreements, uh, an engineering clerk could be hired from Red River and you would be through the co-op term, they would be here from April to October. And the plan would be that we would retain that person for their, until they graduate and then they would be eligible for assistant position but that is the plan as opposed to advertising for a straight assistant but the engineering clerk is included in our CDA okay um councillor gray and then dr morio and then what and deloria well councillor morio okay councillor morio so, so there, there, i wasn't aware that there's an engineering clerk classification in our CDA. It's been there for a while, but never filled. Mm -hmm. You've been there for over three years and years. Yeah. Oh, and the block is the last one to take one down. If it's, if it's just in the CBA, that's what Councilor Gray. One, two, three, three. I intend this is a position that's going to be partially or at least fully funded for a uh, of time. That's weird. I we are looking at the uh, Making a deal with the MMF uh, for his sponsors to do that. Um, you may need to speak with um, the union about, and, and you may not want to create it as a particular union position. Um, you may buy it for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is that um, in doing that, you have assumed that that position is necessary by getting a training position paid for. Um, you uh, may have violated the provision of the collective bargaining agreement that allows, or doesn't allow for effective contract. The second is once you fill that position, and if you plan on transferring that position into a management position, you may be compelled, or at least the union will ask, or will argue that you should be compelled to fill that position again, that you can't simply remove a person from the union and be classified. Because that's what you. I think you need to get some advice 
on how to do this within the scope of what we have for legal authority. I think, right? Again, I think that. Those are good points raised. Councilor Murray. Uh, on, uh, I guess, two, two points. I guess what my, my original point was, should we not be advertising this as a term position? Yeah, like the co-op is a term position from May until uh, October. But it, should the resolution not reflect that? Just so just so that there's no misunderstanding that, that it's for a term only? Um, and I guess my second question, or point, I guess, is I don't know if it's a point or a question or just some history, but on Councilor Gray's point about uh, uh, not filling a position, um, we've done that quite a few times in the past. I mean, we used to have a workforce of in public works, probably five people higher than it is now. And when somebody would retire, we would just ne ne not fill that position anymore. So I don't, I don't know, maybe what we were doing was not kosher, I, I don't know. We definitely hear about it from the union. We, we heard about it from the union, but I mean, our I, I remember when we had Grant Mitchell, he said, he said it's your it's prerogative just, how many people, yeah, how many people you have working for you. So, so in light of, of what Councilor Gray brought up on this, is this probably a wise idea maybe to have this table then? Well, this one we would like because we need we need to get our our job on Red River's uh, oh, co-op okay. program. But we just need to have the wording right, Councillor Gray. Um, okay, I I would be surprised if Grant Mitchell authorized this particular process. If you don't hire a vacant position, you're fully entitled to do that. That's not what I was talking about. What you're talking about doing is creating a vacant position by moving oh, a person from a union yeah, position into a management position that was left vacant so that they could fill it. I don't think the union will see that the same way at all. I don't think an arbitrator will see that the same way. I think they'll see that as circumventing the collective bargaining agreement. That's what I think they'll see that. But and that's an unfair labor practice, and especially while we're in the negotiations. But you guys will do whatever you do. Yeah, the, the second the second point is that why are we making this a part if it's a if it's a if it's a position if it's a, a student position why aren't we creating a different student position going to the union saying we have a, we want to hire a student um, we're going to put them into uh, we're going to uh, have them do this work we're hiring the person as a student they're not going to have a management position as they're a student but they're going to learn from that and eventually we hope that they will come to be a management position but this is not a union or non-union position. This is helping. You know, presumably, we're going to try and give preference to local kids, as I understand it, and and we're trying to get kids who live here to be able to come back. And we're offering a, a position that would do that. Do you have an objection to that? And presumably, the union or local people too won't have a, an objection to that. And we can get the position that way, as opposed to creating, as, as opposed to using a position we don't use and. We probably should eliminate it from our structure and from the bargaining position. But I, I again, this is just thoughts. Like that. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, we, and then uh, if, if you change the resolution, say we, we authorize men go ahead with creating a student position uh, with the Red River Community College uh, on a cooperative basis and to keep that person as part of the cooperative plan until they graduate, I would move for a second of your whatever that. And it down. Go ahead. And this is just one term. Like yes, it's, it's, term. It's, it's, term. Yeah. it's for that person or for that because we have a vacancy and we want to build somebody into the position, yeah. whether it's somebody from here or somebody else, but it's somebody from here. Yeah, because potentially that person yeah. has become the assistant, but yes. that's not a not guarantee. Yeah. But what we're doing is we're saying for yeah. one year, we're authorizing management to engage with Red River Community College in a cooperative program and to use some of our resources, if necessary, so that they can complete the cooperative educational program with Red River Community College. That avoids that whole other mess. So, I think you, 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 uh, you fix up the resolution. Are 
who's also the director of public works, be authorized to begin the hiring process for a term student engineering position to complete the Red River Cooperative Program with the town of Swan. Not fully complete, but it's, I would add one year for a one year term. That's a team of the council glory agrees that. I think that's a good point. Not complete, but to, to do. participate. participate. Result the director of public works be authorized to begin the hiring process for a term student engineering position to participate in the Red River Cooperative Program with the town of Swan River. So we it was originally moved by Council White, seconded by Council Morio. You both in agreement with that? Did we want to put one year on there? Well, it's less than a year. Like it's a term position. Mm -hmm. It's a co-op term. But you, you should probably oh, get so term uh, from May, October, and May. Well, the graduate in October, you can do the math for that. Actually, no, that's the co-op term, and they go back to school. Oh, I see. Okay. But the last co-op term, it actually does end at their Oh, well, then, from, for the period that it, it, it sits, from May till October. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, let's put those dates in there. And it yeah. clarifies that there's a definite start and end dates. I agree. Fresh. Okay. Result of the Director of Public Works be authorized to begin the hiring process for a term from May to October, a student engineering position to participate in the Red River Lumber Program with the Town of Swan River. Originally moved by Council White and seconded by Council Memorial. You're in agreement? Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 15.3.2. Result the CEO be authorized to begin the hiring process for the assistant to the CEO position. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morial. Um, I would suggest actually changing that name from assistant to, to the CEO position to executive assistant. Um, so I've seen it more than once on documentation where the abbreviation ACAO comes up and it's hard. People will refer to that since we just had a recent assistant CAO that it's not this. Without the word to the CEO, they will get the Scope of that position totally wrong. So you won't have that. I would, I would just add for clarity um, hiring process for the assistant or executive assistant to the CEO position. That's right. Should we get um, Councilor Gray? I have two points. The first, because I didn't have to speak on other issues differently. This was a commitment we made in the hiring process of the CAO, and so I think it's fundamental um, to that. But because we've changed the title and to some extent the duties, depending on how they're described, um, I think we need to confirm the union that they understand that this is filling that slot in the management scope, that this is a notice scope position before you actually fill it. If you don't do that, you will find a pretty quick grievance, I suspect. The other thing um, that's missing, and, and because of it, it is a, an understanding that we had when we were hired, um, I, for this motion, I'm certainly going to 
people honoring my normal conscience. But I didn't know we had a hiring process. I, I didn't, I haven't seen it. And maybe we do. Maybe we have personnel policy that I haven't seen that sets out the process. We definitely don't have a written one that's approved from council. Right. But it, so I think that's, 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 that's necessary yeah. uh, as part of this process. I don't think you I think that's a necessary piece of this. This is what the process will lead to the criterion for um, in house approval. This is the criterion for advertising. I don't think you get to just um, yeah. so, wing it. So, so, but, but this is a different cattle fish than others, you know, but that one. So, for, that for me, I see that as distinctly, but I, I recognize that there's going to be an inconsistency in my position, but I'm putting on record why. I think that inconsistency applies to this particular fact situation. So I'm not a hiring process instead of the Well, I suppose. Yeah. Well, on this one, you can say however you want. I don't really care. I will have other comments on there. No, it is on our to do list. Come to the board. Um. That was. Councilor Greig touched on one, one of my points was to have is there a job description made up for this position and if so I think we, we need to share it with first Mr. Edwards let him know what our plans are so we can get some advice on how to approach this let him know how this all came about you know we're not filling the assistant CAO position that's basically being eliminated and uh, we're going to give the CAO an executive assistant um, and then we'll need to let the union know what our plans are because I think they may they may or may not, but I I'd rather you know be up front with them yeah. and take take things head on than you know than find out a year from now hey you never told us this position existed so first I'd say go to Mr Edwards see what he says. No, we were those were in the plans to to yeah. run that all by everything is uh, honestly i threw these on here to, yeah. to honest there's no better way to say it but to get them out of the way yeah but uh good questions okay you know the contract for it anyway. yes okay so i'll read it again result of co be authorized to begin the hiring process for the executive assistant to the co position originally moved by councillor white and councillor friesen you both agree to the amendments. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that the CEO be authorized to begin the hiring process for the interim recreation director. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, 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 oh. I speak against this. Okay. Uh, there does need to be a hiring process, and there needs to be criteria. There needs to be job roles, and, and while um, and, and this is the perfect time not to fill this particular position. So I, I'm not strongly in favor of this particular process, but I'm speaking against it. There's a good agreement. So what what do you would you like you recommend to look at first what the the hiring I, process looks I, like I, firstly? I, I, I you saying I, that sure. just I'm I'm saying that the, the hiring process that that I have real concerns as I've expressed about this particular position anyway but but more importantly i really think this is the kind of position where we need um, the hiring process that is an approved process for deciding how processes are, are handled because um, this is a situation that will inevitably explode um, and i can't see anything good coming from um, not having a formalized process where we have approved the process for doing it. But, uh, you know, candidly, um, it'll be what it'll be. I, I, I don't, I, I have no animus to anybody. I just think this is not, again, we've started on the process really well. I'm, I'm really pleased and, and I feel there for you. I have an absolute faith in his judgment. Uh, Paul, he's so kindly, I've got through your conversation with him. 
Um, but I think the, the process, um, process persons, everyone knows, and the process for hiring somebody um, requires that there be um, a certain process that council has, which we've talked about in other positions, and one of them is that there's a process for deciding how people get hired so that in most positions of authority, um, the process requires um, external advertising unless there's some obvious um, different context. And so I, I, I point to the example of um, Mr. Harvey sat in a the assistant uh, director of public works position for a number of years was intimately familiar in that context going through an external process would be strange um, to uh, in this context that is not what we have so i, I don't think that's what we should do and i think we should have um, a formal process if we don't i don't think we can afford it in the position Council Mario, um my motion that we table this resolution until we get it the uh, an updated job description, um, the salary rig for it, and a hiring process in place for that position while it is before it's. Second to, uh, to uh, that motion. To the motion to table. All yeah. in okay. favor. Okay. All in favor. So it's the table. 15-3-4. Result, the CO be authorized to begin the hiring process for the hall manager recreation programmer position. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Again, I guess I was going to say this one also will, will you know, should wait for that wage range because that, you know, none of that is approved yet. Uh, this one may be a little easier than the last one. That's not a big surprise that the director record uh, tables. So, and I know that that's not going to get solved right away. But uh, I guess this one is a little easier for council because it, it's just added responsibilities. We do have a draft job description of uh, everything is going over with table A. But I get it if uh, it would make sense to to wait until those wage ranges are approved to really do any of this, to be honest. Or at, least, at least outside the, the co-op term uh, and the assistant to the CAO. Those were the two. There, there may be an argument that consistency is the hot problem of little lines, and so my mind may be expanding well past its formal bounds. But, um, <laughs> Uh, I do. I don't agree with the resolution for a totally different reason. I think it's unnecessary. Uh, the truth is that we have a busy person who has part of that responsibility, and that's my view that the CAO can change those that job description um, within reason, um, and should come back to council and say, "Do I demand a job description? Is there any problem with that?" That's all that needs to happen. I think quite candidly, the only other person that you're recommending this way can do that. We'll fill up position for the time being in any event, unless there's another position they fulfill later. And so I would remind you, it's as simple as coming back with a different job description and saying, here's the new job description, do you approve it? That's what I would do. And I don't think you need to go by any hiring process at all. You've already hired the person, so just change the job description. And then later, you can change the, the pay scale. Council Moore, so I do. I agree with that, but uh, Councillor Gray said it's uh, um, because I think if, if you open up the hiring process on this, um, may get an you may get, uh, she would have to go through the whole bid process as for this way, um, just bring us back an amended job description for consideration and uh, expand your duties. And, uh, I guess I was being uh, a little too formal on my resolution. I was not going to advertise for this. I was going to promote my uh, tomorrow. Yeah. A promotion. It's just resigning so, your duty. You know, the, the, the thing is, is, as long as you understand that I will, like, sh she's having added responsibilities, and I am asking for, for her to get a raise. Uh, and I would ask that that be retroactive, I guess, uh, March 1st. That's, what, that's what's coming. What do you want? She's doing that. So, so what, what, what raise are you asking? Do you have a draft job description? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if, if we can vote on the other and leave it out, I'll have another resolution. Yeah. Or we can, well, I guess we can either amend it or we can. Well, we amend it. What would we do with this one? So I. I agree. Okay, well, let, let Councilor uh, DeWarie speak and then we'll. We'll, well I was just going to speak on, on uh, you know, giving her the added responsibilities in light of the fact, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if all councils were, but in light of the fact that things that may have gone on mm -hmm. the, with the past CAO, um, I don't want to be giving her empty promise. I don't want to give her responsibilities and with a promise of a future wage increase. So, if you you know, well, I, I know that, but uh, so that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah. So amended. So I move that the CAO be authorized to change the job description of the hall manager to include the program for the programmer duties, recreational programmer duties, as set out in the new job description at a salary of, what's the number? He's typing. Yeah, he's got a number. Forty five one fifty. Yeah, but you can't maybe you will have that in there right now. You'll have that as per schedule yes. A or something. Are you planning on a higher wage later? Well after one year, yes. Okay. Because I I do state that there's okay. no cost. That's the number that. you're happy with she's happy with forty five yeah. one technically I stayed within twelve months so less than whatever, whatever, whatever. As long as you're happy, she's happy forty five one fifty. Put it in as per schedule A. As per schedule A. Yeah, put it in the red schedule. Good spot. I'm sorry. That's bad for you finding your red traffic. Uh, I don't think it's a count. It probably just shouldn't. It doesn't look right. Yeah. Okay. And what day, date is that when you get back to what, what day do you want to make it effective? Well, she, she's been doing that. I know I said March 1st. Uh, pick, pick a day. January 1st? I would even do like December 15th. Okay. You're asking me. So you want to well, we are asking you. <laughs> it's your decision. I would say, just give us a date. December 15th. Okay, December effective now. December 15th, 2020. Is Terry going to be happy to go back to the British group? Oh, I'm just fine. He'll be just fine. <laughs> it is what it is. You're right. It's going to be the same as last. But whatever. It's not my game yet, so I don't care. You do, yeah. Okay, does that resolution work for you? I'm just touching it up. Okay. So that's the amended resolution? Yeah. So can you move on? Result the CAO be authorized to change the job description of the hall manager to include the recreational programming programmer duties and wages be reflected as per schedule A retroactive to December 15, 2020. Who originally moved this? Uh, Councillor Delorier? No, White was it? Or White or Freeze. and Friesen? Yeah. Okay. White and, Friesen. and you guys uh, agree? Yes. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Carried. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10 17 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We're adjourned.